Hey guys, so here comes the third part of the Q&A session where I look at your questions and try to answer them as detailed as possible. And as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure these answers will not only help the people who ask these questions, but you too. Consider this video a very important one because it contains a lot of useful information that will help you in your process. I have also put timestamps for each question, but I would recommend you guys to go through the whole video for a complete understanding. So without any further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first question asked by Bino is, can we raise open work permit for spouse even if we apply for the spouse sponsorship online? So this question deserves a video of its own that I will work on soon and post for you guys. But just to give you a quick answer to this question, yes. You can very well apply for an open work permit for your spouse after applying for their spouse sponsorship online or paper-based. If the application is already submitted online, then you have to first wait for the AOR to arrive before proceeding with the work permit. And please note, this application will also need to be submitted online. Later on, once your spousal application has been approved in principle, is only when the RCC will start processing your spouse's work permit application. They won't look at your application until this approved in principle stage has passed. But if the sponsorship has been done paper-based, then you are encouraged to submit the work permit application right along with the sponsorship application. But if you did not, then you can just submit a hard copy application as well to the processing center in Alberta. I'm leaving a link in the description below that clearly explains how this whole procedure goes, so you can check that out as well. Now the next question from Amrita is, does the sponsor with PR also need to provide copies of passport of all? Yes, this is one of the main requirements to be able to successfully proceed with the sponsorship of your spouse living outside or inside Canada. IRCC does not only require documents and proofs of the principal applicant, but of the sponsor too, and passport submission is one of them. Right here in this video, you will be able to see a complete checklist of everything that you're supposed to submit in your sponsorship. So go check that out if you haven't, but after this video. Now the next question from Mario is, I'm beginning my process. My wife is sponsoring me. Does the account of the online portal have to be under her name or mine? Okay, so I have already been asked this question before that I've covered in my first Q&A video, but I'll cover it again for you. So in this scenario, you'll be the principal applicant in the sponsorship application and your wife will be your sponsor. Talking about the account creation, basically anybody can create an account online for submission. It doesn't really matter because what matters is that the right forms and evident proofs are being submitted in the application. If it's a paper application, then the online account doesn't even come into the picture because everything goes paper-based. It's just after your paper application has arrived at the visa office is when you will be able to start tracking it through the application number, UCI, and so on. And if it's an online application, either of the two, sponsor or principal applicant can register themselves on the portal and start preparing the application. Below in the description, I have added a link for you guys that you can use to track your application status. All right, before I take the next question, if you're liking this video so far, please make sure to leave a thumbs up down here and type in the comments, what other questions do you have in your mind related to your application? And for more videos like this, make sure you're hitting that red button that says subscribe or right here that asks you to click. And do you guys like this new format of helping you guys through Q&A? Let me know what you think. All right, so the next question from Ranjit is, I applied PR sponsorship for my wife this month. I want to know that can she apply for a biometric now until waiting for AOR? Firstly, there is nothing called the application of biometrics. Whatever the case is, your wife, the principal applicant, cannot proceed with the biometrics until IRCC has requested you to do so. And the request is made with a letter called the biometrics instruction letter that you receive in your email. It's only after this request that you can proceed with the booking and submission of biometrics. And just so you know, you are not required to do anything to receive this letter. This letter automatically comes into your account around one to three days after you submit the application. So right after you receive it, you just need to go to a VFS global website of your country and simply do the booking. And that's it, you're good to go. Now the next question from Samuel is, my spouse visa got transferred to NDVO. Any idea how much time NDVO takes from AOR to PPR these days? Okay, so NDVO, the New Delhi Visa Office located in India, has a lot of mixed reviews when it comes to the processing of sponsorship applications. A lot of Indians seem to have had a very hard time through this visa office because majority of the applicants have faced a very long hold that have led to a further delay in the couple reunion. And unfortunately, the situation is still the same. Most applicants who had their file moved to the New Delhi visa office still haven't received any updates yet. And even if some people are, it's usually after several months or even a long wait of more than a year. 
Processing times are worse than they were at the peak of the pandemic, especially the students who are unable to join their academic courses in Canada due to delays in their visas and study permits. Let me give you an example. A work permit application in Manila is currently taking 16 weeks and in Beijing, it's taking 21 weeks. In New Delhi, the current processing time is 44 weeks. And that is an improvement from just a few months ago when it was 56 weeks. NDVO was taking more than one year to process a work permit application. Just imagine about the sponsorship applications. Several Twitter accounts have been made to bring government's attention to this serious issue, but I don't think there has been much improvements yet. People really have had enough with this never ending wait. Hopefully, NDVO comes up with something better to process its backlogs even faster. For now, all we can do is just wait. So since I can't really give you a concrete answer on how long it takes for PPR to arrive, but if you're one of those applications who had their file moved to NDVO, then everything is to your luck on who gets picked up first. Now the next question from Nitin is that he's applying online for his wife's spousal visa outline and his wife doesn't have a family name. So he wants to know if he should mention family name, the same name as the given name or just leave it blank. Okay, so a quick and easy answer for this will be to leave the given name tab blank and enter the full given name under the family name tab. Make sure you're leaving the given name column completely blank and also avoid putting not applicable, NA or any other symbol in there. I've put a link in the description from IRCC that explains about the same thing. Now the next question from Mohammed is, is wedding ceremony mandatory in Ontario in order to register marriage and get certification? Yes, it is absolutely mandatory. Firstly, to be able to apply for a certificate, you would have to first apply for a marriage license, which is basically done through submitting a license application and then booking an appointment. And once you receive the license, you are required to perform a marriage ceremony within 90 days of receiving it. The ceremony could either be a civil or religious one and must be performed by someone who has the legal power to marry people. Talking about the venue, once you have the marriage license in hand, the ceremony can take place anywhere you like, like a banquet hall, a restaurant, a religious place, or even at your home. Right after all this is done, you are able to order a certificate about 10 to 12 weeks from the date of your marriage. It's a short and precise answer to your question, so I hope it helps. Now the next question from Nitika is, did you include a right can receipt in your visitor visa file? Is it mandatory to attach that as I didn't attach it in my application? Okay, so by arrive can, I believe you mean refer to this document. So let me inform you that this receipt is only to be filled up online when you're about to land in Canada. And it has nothing to do with the application procedure. Arrive can is basically a record that is maintained by the border services of Canada to keep a database of all the immigrants landing in Canada, just for the purpose of COVID. But guess what? As per a recent announcement made by the government of Canada, starting October 1st, 2022, which is a few days from now, all the COVID-19 border requirements, including vaccination, mandatory use of ArriveCan, and any testing and quarantine isolation requirements will end for all travelers entering Canada, whether by land, air, or sea. This means just forget about ArriveCan if you're coming to Canada after October 1st. And rest assured, this new announcement applies to everyone who is planning to land in Canada soon. Looks like now we are heading in the right direction. Alright guys, leave your love with the thumbs up down below if you think this video helped you in any way. I will keep posting this Q&A video sessions because I think this is the best way to help you guys in your queries and simultaneously cover different topics. Let me know what you guys think. And guys, keep posting your questions in the comments below and stay tuned for my next video. And make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And make sure to check out my other videos as well, where I have covered specific topics related to immigration and how you can bring your loved ones in Canada. I wish you best of luck in your application and I'll see you again with another interesting topic on Canadian Desi.